Hello, lovely people. Welcome once again to Abinasia's Recipes. Thank you so much for tuning in. In today's video, I share with you how I make my Hausa Cocoa or Spice Millet Porridge. We'll begin from scratch. All right, let's get started. Hausa Cocoa or Spice Millet Porridge is a recipe from the northern part of Ghana. And I'm so excited to share it with you. I have two cups of millet grain here, which I'll thoroughly wash and then soak in water for 24 hours. The millet grain can normally have some dust in it or stones. So you want to thoroughly wash it very well. So I'll use both of my palms to rub it in water and then strain the water out. The grains that you see on top are the not so good grains. Yes, so we'll repeat this same process until we get a clear and clean water on top. Yes, so as you keep cleaning or as you keep washing it, you will see the water getting clearer and clearer as you go. This is a three-day process, guys. So please be patient and watch till the end. It is a very healthy and delicious porridge to have in the morning with your fry bean cake or your puff puff yes so we'll keep washing it until we get a clear water my water is clear so that means the millet grain is very well cleaned we'll then go ahead and transfer it into a container and then we'll add water and let it sit until the next day or for 24 hours so I'm using my hands to strain it from the container or from the pan that I washed the millet in. Yes, you can see some stones at the bottom. Yes, if you use a strainer to transfer everything into it, you are also adding the stone together you know, with the millet and that's exactly what we don't want. So I've added water and I'm gonna let it sit until the next day or until 24 hours please subscribe and give me a thumbs up and please comment day two as you can see look at the foamy top of the water we'll go ahead and drain the water and then we'll give it another wash maybe we'll wash it two more times before we add our in other ingredients and then we blend this is an interesting process and trust me, it is worth it. It is worth it to make it from scratch. I really enjoy doing it guys and I hope you will try this as well. So I'm washing it again, rubbing it in my hands and then I'll transfer it into a strainer and then we'll go ahead and add in our other ingredients and we are ready to blend. And there's my well clean millet green. All right. And then we are ready to add in all the other natural ingredient. And then we blend. All right. So I have some chili peppers. I have cloves, black pepper, and a cup of ginger. And we'll go ahead and add everything all together. Give it a mix. And we add water to our blender. And we blend very simple and easy i'll add half of my millet and the spices or the natural spices into my blender and i've added water and then i'll blend until very smooth yes you blend until it is very smooth and it is blended now it's nicely smooth so i'll go ahead and transfer it into my six quart container and then we'll blend the other half before we begin the straining process and blend until it is smooth. Okay, and then the second batch is done blending and I'll go ahead and transfer that as well into my container. Yes, and then guys, we are ready to strain. So before you strain, you want to give everything a nice mix and then We'll use a normal strainer to strain. We'll be straining this three good times before we can get the smooth texture 
of the millet porridge if you've had millet porridge before you know that it is very smooth yes so i'm using my silicone spoon to press down the shafts yes to um, strain out the milk out of the millet okay and then i have another container on the side where i'm transferring the shafts into yes so then we'll repeat this until we are done straining and this is the first step of straining okay so this is the last of the first strain okay and then what i'll be doing next is i'll go ahead and blend the shafts again with water because there is so much that we can get out of this millet grain look at it we still have some more milk in it so i'll go ahead and take it back to the blender and then blend it also and then we'll come back and strain that and add it to the first one that we strained like i said guys it's a process and i'm so excited to share this with you all right so the shafts are done blending so i'm taking it back to strain that as well yes i am directly straining it into the first strain that we did yes and then i will use my silicone spoon again to press down the shafts to to um to strain out the milk or to get the milk out of the shafts and then i have a bowl that i am transferring the shafts into so this time i'm using my hands to squeeze out the all the liquid out of the shafts yes there is so much that we can get out of it oh yeah and do not throw your shafts away yet do not throw your shafts away yet we will then go ahead and add water to the other shafts that we this shafts that we got we'll go ahead and add water to this shafts that we got and then we'll strain it again and add it to the um strained already strained one all right so i went ahead and added water again and i'm straining that into the other container yes before i give it another strain it's an interesting process and there are a few ways to strain it this is one of the ways that i do it i also have another way um that i can do it you can also just use this strainer to strain your millet milk so many times yes so this is um the second time that i strained the shafts that i added water to yes now it is time to do our final strain i'm using a cheese cloth or a nut milk bag I think that's what it's called. Um, they use this to brew beer sometimes. Yes. So it's like a brewer bag. Yes. You can get this on Amazon. And I'm using that to do my final strain. I like my spice millet porridge very nice and smooth. Because my kids also eat it. And you know kids, when they don't like the grainy texture of something it becomes a problem so i like it as smooth as possible but if you don't have this cheesecloth or you don't have this brewer bag you can just use your normal strainer to strain it until you don't see any shafts please if you have any questions you can actually put your question in the comment section and i'll definitely reply and help you make it yes it's very easy there's a lot of straining, but it is worth it at the end, guys. And the and best of all, it is a very nutrition porridge. Very nutritious. And guys, this is our final strain. Okay, and after this, we are not doing anything else. All right, so this is the grainy or the shafts that I got from the final strain. And then we'll cover and let it sit for 24 more hours. So it is a three-day process. All right, guys, so we made it sit for 24 hours and it looks like fermentation took place within that 24 hours. Yes, so we'll go ahead and pour out the liquid from the top and then the actual millet itself is settled at the bottom. Yes. Oh, yes, guys, it is looking really good and look at 
how amazing that millet is looking oh yes all right and then i went ahead and scooped some so you guys can see and look at the smooth texture of this millet amazing all right so we'll go ahead and put some of that water on our stove and then we'll bring it to a boil okay and then i'll go ahead and scoop some of the millet from the bottom and then we'll mix it with just a little bit of uh, of that water of the water that's settled on top okay look at it guys look at the texture all right this is the texture that you should always use to make your millet porridge yes okay and the reason why we didn't throw that water or discard that water is because all of the spices and the flavor it's in that water okay so whilst the water here is boiling i'm going ahead to take off the foam that is formed on top of the water and you want to make sure that your water boils very well because we'll be using an indirect heat from the stove to make it i've turned off my stove my stove is not on but i like to keep it on just to still get the heat from the stove but we're the stove is not on all right so i went ahead and added it to the water and i used my whisk to whisk um and all right and then we've covered to just let it sit for about 10 minutes another way that you can also make it is that you can directly add the water into the millet mixture and then you use your whisk to whisk it and then you cover with aluminum foil and then a damp cloth or a towel. Let that sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. That is also another way that you can do it. This is the actual indirect heat, no heat at all. Yes, this is the final product. Now look at it, this is the perfect texture. I like it because this, you can drink it from a cup or, and another thing is that it thickens up as it sits. Yes, it thickens up as it sits. So I like it very nice and, um, a bit runny not too runny but th this texture is just a perfect texture and this is the one that was on the stove but the stove was turned off this is the indirect heat also yes all right so always make it with indirect heat if you like your heat to be on also go ahead and, and do it as you want you can make it with heat no worries yes you can make it with heat that is not a problem but the authentic way of making it is with indirect heat and now look at how thick it turned yes when it sit just for about five minutes it thickens up so if you make it just a bit runny it is going to be worth it it's totally just the way you like it i've added my sugar and then we serve it with kose it's a fried bean cake uh, puff puff is also a fried bread and i've added evaporated milk to mine with some roasted peanuts and my son is over here enjoying himself with a little bit of everything and this look at how the texture is okay and guys thank you so much for your support thank you for tuning in please like comment and subscribe please hit that notification button so anytime i upload you'll be notified thank you god bless you and please stay safe bye bye